All right, welcome back for the second part of One Man's Faith today. Again, my name is Neil Owen, in case you didn't realize that. And let's go ahead and turn now to Hebrews. Let's go back to our study on Hebrews. Uh, and let's go to chapter 3. Now, we've been looking at um, chapters 1, 2, and 3 show a, a, uh, uh, a comparison of Jesus. And the first chapter is about Jesus, the comparison of Jesus to the angels and, the, and how much higher Jesus is over the angels. Chapter 2 talks about Jesus and man and the differences in how Jesus had to come as a man to be able to be that, that perfect sacrifice. And in chapter 3, we're going to see, or we have seen, that, that the comparison is between Jesus and Moses. Both of them kind of being priests, both of them being prophets, one being the priest prophet over Israel, the other Jesus being the priest prophet over, over the people in the church. And so in uh, Hebrews chapter 3, starting with verse 1, it says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. He's, he, he's called the, the apostle and high priest. Of our confession. Now, something we need to notice even before that is that there is a therefore. Therefore, holy brethren. So when you see a therefore, you need to find out what it's there for. Okay? Why is it there? Why is he saying this? Consider Jesus. Because in chapter 2, around verse 17, he said, he said, he had to be made like his brethren in all things, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make atonement for the sins of the people. For since he himself was tempted in all that he suffered, he is able to become, he's able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Therefore, consider Jesus, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. Our confession is what we speak. Okay, the word is homo legeo, which again means saying the same thing. Saying the, thing, saying the same thing as God. In other words, his word. What does his word say? We use that word. We, we glean from that word. And we, and we, in a sense, give back that word to God. Okay, he says he was faithful to him who, who appointed him as Moses also was in his house, okay? There's a comparison. Jesus was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses was, all right? For he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses by just so much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken later. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are if we hold fast our confession and boast of our hope firm till the end. I believe last week that's about where we stopped when we were looking at the if if we hold fast, okay? I want, I want you to understand that this is not saying that you can easily lose your grip on your salvation and fall away from God. There is, in a sense, a once saved, always saved. But... It's dependent on what we do. Because we're going to see as we get toward chapter 6 that there is a way to have tasted of the heavenly callings and fall away and not be able to renew or be redeemed again. Okay, But it's not, it's not what you don't do or what you don't know. I mean, you know, it's not like there being a law out there that you didn't know anything about and you fell into and you fell into sin because you didn't know about the law. You know, you know that it had no. It's what we do that gets us in trouble. And here he's saying, uh, whose house we are, 
if we hold fast the confession. In other words, we've got to understand that we've got to hold fast our confession. Okay, our homologeo. We've got to hold fast. We've got to hold fast our confidence and boast and the boast of our hope firm until the end. We can't, you can't come into this thing. You can't claim Jesus is Lord and then decide, oh, this is too hard for me. I want to walk away and think that you'll end up in heaven. Because if you walk away, you're giving it up. You're giving it up. And so we need to hold fast to that confession, okay? We need to hold fast to that confession. Now, he gives an example here of not hearing and learning and taking hold of what we of what we have of what we have walked into, okay? Look at what he says. He says in verse 7, therefore, when you see a therefore, you find out what is there for. What's it there for? Because it says if we hold fast our confidence and our boast to the end, just as the Holy Spirit says. Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tried me by testing me and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. I got to find my other page here. And they did not know his ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Now, the, what he's saying to us, and I believe he, re, whoops, I believe he repeats it, yes. He says, take care, brethren, in verse 12, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sins. So he's, he's bringing forth this concept of today. Today, if you hear his voice. Now he's talking back, he's talking 2,000 years ago, but he's talking forward to us. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Like right now. We're going into Scripture today. Listen, if you turn your back and say, oh, that's all baloney. Oh, I don't want to hear it anymore. All this Jesus stuff. Listen, you, you are hardening your heart. Don't do it. Don't do it. Listen and glean. Even if you've heard this stuff a thousand times, God will speak something into your heart that will be fresh and active if you'll listen. Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Listen, examine yourself. If you've heard this before, say, okay, all right, now have I done anything that maybe I need to look at since the last time I heard it? Always, always, always try and glean from the Word, from, from people speaking it. As a matter of fact, you know, Paul says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that, that, that is the rhema, the rhema word, okay? That's, that's what's being spoken to you. That's where faith comes from. Understand and learn that, that, that there is a possibility if you don't receive it that you will harden your heart. That's what he's saying. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. Now, when did they provoke him? Okay, if you're if you're up on your history, then you realize, oh, yeah, that was back in the wilderness. That was back in the wilderness. They they heard and they hardened their hearts. And that's not a good place to be. Because once your heart starts to harden, it's easier for it to become more hardened than it is to become soft and pliable for God. You don't want to go near being hardened. 
Don't, don't, every time you hear the word or hear somebody start to speak it, don't walk away and don't tune it out. That adds to the hardness that you have. It's almost like epoxy. Epoxy, you know, is two parts, you know, and, and you have to mix equal parts for it to work. And you've got one part started there. And as you hear the word of God, if you're not, if you're turning away, you're adding more and more of the, of the other chemical until finally it gets so hard it's no good. The epoxy becomes epoxy and hardens. We don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that. Check your heart. See what's happening. Are you turning away? Did you? Are, am, am I on only because there's nothing else for you to watch? Don't do that to yourself. Either cut it off. <laughs> don't do that either. Or say, okay, God, what can I glean from what this fellow is saying? That's, what you, that's where you want to go. So your heart stays pliable so that, so that you're always seeking to, something from the Lord because he's always wanting to speak to you. He's always wanting to speak to you. He wants to speak into you and bring life to you and, and edify you. And that's what the Word does. Okay? All right, so be edified with a cup of coffee. Go ahead and get it. I'll be right back.